What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode at the Decentralized Chain. So today we are going to be talking about the MetaMask wallet. A lot of my friends and family have been asking recently, you know, given that there's an ICO happening every single day, they're asking what wallet should I use in order to participate within those ICOs? Um, and I say more importantly, if those ICOs are in the form of ERC20 tokens, then you're going to need a wallet that is compatible with that so before we get into that what is ERC 20 so ERC 20 is basically a standard that tokens must meet to be able to transact on the Ethereum network that's it right so the difference between tokens such as ERC 20 tokens and so let's say a standalone currency like Litecoin or Bitcoin for example is that the ERC 20 tokens piggyback on the Ethereum network so they're hosted on ethereum addresses and sent by ethereum transactions so now that we know what that is how do we actually store them how do we actually use them and more importantly how do you get them when you're participating within an ICO so generally when you participate in an ICO that is ER, that is distributing ERC20 tokens as its native token then usually you would be paying with ethereum right so therefore it makes sense that you have an ethereum wallet and what I'm going back onto here is MetaMask is that. MetaMask is an Ethereum wallet, but more importantly, it also allows you to accept those ERC20 tokens that you get as a response, right? So in terms of MetaMask, well, it's quite simple. All it is is a Chrome extension. And more importantly, all it allows you to do really is browse the Ethereum network. It allows you to browse the Ethereum network it also has all the same functions and features as a regular Ethereum wallet would have as well. But also it allows you to interact with the dApps, so decentralized apps and smart contracts, all without needing to download the blockchain or install any software on your machine. So guys, let's get into it. Let's show you how you install it, how you configure it, and how you actually use it to send Ethereum to another address. So first of all, what you wanna do okay is move over to metamask.io okay and then once you're here you'll see this pretty cool little fox it follows your cursor wherever you go and if you go ahead and click on get chrome extension this will then open up the chrome app store you click add to chrome okay that will then go ahead and allow you to add the extension and then this is once that's happened you'll see a little fox icon appear on the top right so that is showing you that the metamask wallet has now installed on your chrome browser so now that we've got the wallet installed um, within our chrome browser you go ahead and click on the fox icon that will then quickly give you a privacy notice which you just go ahead and click accept scroll down the terms of use all the way to the bottom click accept now it's really important guys that you pick a very strong password that is not easily hackable right because if you happen to leave your desktop machine open in a public space or maybe in the office and someone comes along and sees the metamask icon and decides to click on it and say you know what maybe I might try and get into it you know if they get through to the password then that's it guys it's, it's game over basically that's your ethereum gone so make sure you do use a complex password that is not easily hackable so we go ahead add in our complex password and this password is just to unlock the actual wallet when you're accessing it on a day-to-day -day basis okay so you go ahead and click create once you do that it will then create you a seed password now this is really important guys you need to save this print it offline store it in a very safe place so for example the actual Chrome extension you can install it on a number of machines so for example I have a desktop machine and I also have a laptop and I have the same wallet installed in both of them and in order to retrieve that wallet off the actual blockchain what you need to know is your seed password so that's this password here you need to save that in a safe place so every time you want to retrieve the wallet or reinstall the wallet on a new machine or you know maybe something's gone wrong and you've had to reinstall everything on your machine you need this in order to retrieve your wallet if you don't have this then your Ethereum is gone it's just unaccessible so you need to make sure you save it in a safe place so either copy it somewhere safe or save the seed um, save the seed file as a word document and then store that somewhere safe as well 
okay once you've done that it will automatically create you an account so you actually now have your first ethereum wallet so now that we've got our wallet up and running what i'll do is quickly run through the various menu options that we have okay so at the very top right you've got your main menu options so here is basically settings logout and information and help if you click on the person icon with the two arrows this basically allows you to create additional wallets as well so maybe you might have a main wallet for keeping all your ethereum and you may create perhaps another wallet where you want to receive donations or maybe you want to participate in airdrops and you don't want them going into your main wallet you want to separate that out so you can have a separate airdrop wallet for example so here all you need to do is just click on create account that basically then creates account number two for you and then if you go back to that person icon you click on there you'll basically be able to transition between the two accounts right further on down you've got the secondary sub menu so if you click on these end items here this basically allows you to view your account on etherscan so it'll show you all the transactions that have happened you can share the qr code equally if you want to send ethereum to this particular account from an exchange or perhaps someone wants to send you ethereum then this what you do is you click on copy address to clipboard and that will copy the um, public address onto the clipboard and you can paste that directly into an exchange or to send it to somebody and then most importantly you've got export private key so similar to the seed file what you can also do here is export the private key for this particular wallet store that in a safe place and if you ever then need to retrieve that wallet again then you can import that private key back in again and that's basically uh, the sort of main basic options or basic menu items that you get within metamask now for example let's just say that we want to send some ethereum from one wallet to another you basically click on account one okay so here i've got some ethereum you click send okay you select the recipient so here let's just say that we want to send it from account one to account two because we just want to send some funds over there okay you then go and select the amount so we'll say we want to transfer one ethereum okay and then you've got transactional data at the bottom this you can treat as a reference so say for example when you're using online banking you may transfer funds from one person to another and you may put a reference in there like payments for tickets for example this works exactly the same way you can add in a reference item and this will show up within the transactional data on etherscan you then go ahead and click next Okay. So the screen that you then presented with is the confirming the transaction screen. Here you specify the amount of gas you are willing to pay in order to fuel that transaction. So any transactions that occur on the Ethereum network require gas, so fuel basically in order to move it from one wallet to the other. And so within this screen you're basically setting the gas limit, the maximum amount of gas that you want to pay in order for that to happen. Now it depends, the gas limit changes depending on the type of transactions. Simple transactions between wallets um, very low gas gas that was required to make a transfer to a smart contract will require a bit more gas normally these types of limitations or specifications are, are normally provided during an I at, at an ICO stage so for smart contracts it will normally recommend the amount of gas that you need to um, provide in order to transact that the problem is if you put too little gas in there the whole in transaction the whole transaction fails and you actually lose that transaction fee in terms of the gas because that goes to the miner so in order to understand how much gas you're actually paying what normally happens if you have a look at the bottom you've got maximum transaction fee that will tell you the maximum amount of ether required in order to ether that will be spent in order to fuel this transaction and then equally it will give you a US dollar amount in terms of what that is so here you can see the default gas limits normally is around two cent and that's it once you're done, once you're happy with that, you click submit and that will then create the transaction and move the con uh, move the funds from one wallet to the other. Equally, you can click reject and then go back to the main screen. Now here, for example, because we clicked reject, it actually shows the transactions as well. So in here you have a list of all the transactions that have occurred. So anything that's passed, failed, you'll be able to click on that and find out a bit more about it. And that's it guys, that's pretty much the MetaMask wallet. Very straightforward to use, very easy to use. So listen guys, if you liked the tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the tutorial, as always, please leave a comment in the section below. I do review the comments. And you know, if there's any way that I can improve it or you want me to improve the video, I am more than happy to do that. 
I'm really here just to help you guys out and find your way through this wonderful space that we call crypto. So thanks for watching guys, see you soon on the next episode.